Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Jen Worrell here. I'll introduce myself one more time. We have a few more minutes before we begin our yin yoga session. Hi, Tiffany. Namaste. Good morning. It's so good to see you. Missed you last week. Oh, if you have tissues, you might need them. So I forgot to mention that in my post this morning. We are going to be doing alternate nostril breathing, okay? Hi, Dania. Thanks for joining. Tissues, if you have a napkin or a paper towel or tissues nearby, you might need one. I meant to mention that earlier. We have a couple minutes before we start, actually about a minute.
so happy that you you're here today it is just about 8 a.m eastern standard time my name is jennifer whirl and i'm a yin yoga teacher with yoga for caregivers thank you for showing up today for yourself and i'm grateful to be here it's because of you so our focus for the month of april is um one of the uh, the yamas and the niyamas and it's called brayer macharia brayer macharia Hi, Carrie. Good morning. And good morning, Christia. Tissues, if you have any. And Brahmacharya is, as I'm sharing, the one of the, the yamas. And we're going to go over a little bit deeper as the month goes on of what it really means and how to help yourself and uh, become more balanced. So it's basically excessive, where you have maybe too many projects going on, uh, you're overwhelmed, maybe you are oversleeping or overeating, and this, this yama helps with coming back into balance. And we're going to practice a few times today a mudra called prana mudra. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your thumb and your ring finger and your little finger, your pinky, you're just going to bring them together so your other fingers are extended, okay? So again, your thumb, your ring finger, your pinky, your little finger, just together like this, okay? So your middle finger and pointer finger are extended, and you're going to bring them facing up to receive, placing them on your knees or on your thighs. Feel free to bring your legs out, whatever feels right for you. And what I love about this uh, prana mudra is that it activates our root chakra. So everything's connected. So the briar materia, the prana mudra, our root chakra, which is located right here in our lower, sp uh, our lower uh, groin region, the spine, so the three vertebrae. And uh, briefly, which we'll get into more as we delve into this practice, is when you feel... Um, overwhelmed or anxious or just stressed out in general, your root chakra is out of balance, okay? And if this root chakra is blocked in any way, it's going to influence the rest of your uh, six chakras. We have seven chakras, and if the first one is impacted, the root, then it will impact the rest. So keep that in mind, and this is great. We're going to practice this as I'm sharing a few times. Feel free to do this throughout the day as well. 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Um, this practice a few times, even if you have a moment to sit outside and do it, ideally that's great. So we're just going to, again, thumb, ring finger, pinky together, peace sign, resting here, just taking a few breaths to settle in. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Two more times, deep breath in through your nose. All the way in, top of the inhale, hold and exhale. <sighs> Sigh it out, all the way out, belly is compressed to your spine, to your spine. Deep breath in and out. <sighs> Good. What I'd like for you to do is take one minute. I will let you know when that minute is up just to sit here in silence and set your intention for your practice today. My intention will be to remain peaceful in the chaos of life. See if you can melt your shoulders back a little bit more, maybe sit up a little taller. All right, very good. Staying here with this beautiful mudra. We're going to transition into child's pose. And child's pose, you're going to bring your hands out forward again. The pinky, 
the ring finger, the thumb is together, and you're going to face your palms up, okay? So both hands you're doing this with. All you're doing is just bringing your forehead down. You can use your bolster or your, your uh, blanket underneath your, uh, your chest or your knees, whatever feels right for you. Staying here for about two minutes. And as you rest here, remember you're into your um, intention. <laughs> Breathing is at a natural pace. And silently repeat to yourself, I have a healthy appetite for the small and large adventures of life. I digest the challenges with great pleasure and joy. And one more time, I have a healthy appetite for the small and large adventures of life. I digest the challenges with great pleasure and joy. And release your hands so your palms are facing open. We're going to move into Cobra Pose. Feel free to take your blanket right under your pelvis or rest um, under, under your knees. We're just going to come forward into Bhujangasana. Variation to keep your legs wide to the width of your mat. Elbows are on the mat, shoulders are back, fingers are spread, okay? This creates more stability and strength. Pressing your palms into the mat, shining your heart forward. You can focus on an object in front of you or close your eyes. Relax your legs, relax your glutes, smile. Unclench your jaw. And again, breathing is at a natural pace. Toes are relaxed. Your jaw, again, is not clenched. So becoming more aware of Briar Macharia will give us more of an awareness if, if we are nervous or um, anxious in any way or overwhelmed. These are signs of weakness and instability. And when you're aware of these feelings, you have the power to control the things that you have and that you're grateful for, like food and shelter and clothing and warmth and love. And even if that helps with meditating just on those things, then do that. We're almost done here. Every time you feel that you are in any pain or tension, you can always bring your forehead down to the mat. You want to use your shoulders and your back here to lift you up. Everyone is going to lift differently. But your arms should be at a 90 degree angle. Again, legs relaxed. Allow the heaviness of your legs to remain heavy. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't think of anything uh, 
creative. Deep breath in and out. Let's move into hero's pose, Varasana. Giving our, um, our arms a little bit of a break. I'm gonna just kneel forward because my head will be cut off and I don't want that. But you do wanna stay upright, maybe placing your hands on your knees, shoulders back. And now we are going to do dangling pose, okay? So dangling pose is similar to forward folds. I'm going to raise my camera here. Oh, sorry about that. There we go. All right. So feet are hip width apart, toes are facing forward. You're gonna fold your arms. So maybe your left arm is scooped right under your right bicep and your right hand is holding your bicep or vice versa, whatever you wanna do. Even your, your feet can even be the width of the mat. Bend your knees so you are protecting your back and just bring the crown of your head towards the mat. Relax the neck and everyone's gonna go further in their own way because we are built differently. Uh, press your heels into the mat, press your toes into the mat, creating those roots, the groundedness that you need. Weight is evenly distributed. Sink a little bit further. Deep breathing. Maybe you can bend your knees a little bit more. About one more minute. Practicing stillness. Just think of everything emptying out. All those thoughts that keep surfacing, just let them pass by. Your thoughts don't own you, you own your thoughts. And now we're just gonna flow a little bit. So come up halfway, take a deep breath in, shoulders back, and exhale. Deep breath in. Shoulders open, exhale. One more time. Again, keep your neck loose. Inhale, raising up, shoulders back, and exhale, fold forward. Okay. Here you can actually use your bolster or go down as deep as you'd like, pressing your hands on the bolster or on the mat if you have blocks handy. And we're gonna just open up the chest. So inhale all the way up, fingers to the ceiling. Exhale, float the hand down. Inhale, other side. Inhale, up, exhale, down. Crown of the head moves towards the mat. Inhale, look at your hand, raise your arm up. Exhale, down. Keep those knees bent if you feel any pinching or tension. Deep breath in, raise the left arm up, and exhale, float the hand down. Good, good, good. All right. Now we're going to bring our legs a little bit wider. Just holding here again, you could actually use your bolster. This is all a matter of what you're comfortable doing. And just fold here for about two minutes. or not use your bolster, again, it's just how you feel today. Hands can be however they'd like. Maybe you wanna practice your mudra that you learned today. Toes are facing forward, knees can be bent. Breathing is at a natural pace. Opening up the back of the legs,
check in that your belly is moving outward when you inhale and it's compressing against your spine on the exhalation. Ideally, you want to match your inhales with your exhales. All right, taking your bolster and choosing to sit on it, we're going to transition into Malasana. So Malasana is a yogic squat, so feet will be out, okay, like a 45 degree angle. They're going to be facing out to protect your knees, and everyone moves differently here. You can always transition back into an easy pose, a seated position, if this feels right for you. Again, where you're going to be practicing your mudra, keeping the arms, the elbows, right into the inner thighs by the knees, the inside of the knees, opening up the chest. This is one way, or you can just place your hands to your heart and then use your elbows to open up your hip region. This is great to stimulate our root chakra. Spine is long. Crown of the head is towards the ceiling. And remember to smile, to loosen any tense areas in the jawline, maybe in your shoulders or neck. Remember to think of your shelter, that you have food, warmth, clothing, and love. Even water. These are the, basics, the basic things to remember to help keep you grounded. Let's release our hands if they are in prayer or are in a mudra. And coming back into a seated position if you're not there already. I'm going to choose to sit on my blanket. You can sit on your bolster if you'd like. And we will be practicing alternate nostril breathing, which is another great way to generate balance and groundedness to uh, begin and even end your day. If you have tissues nearby, now is the time to get out anything that would interfere with this breathing, uh, this controlled breathing technique. So there's a couple ways you can practice alternate nostril breathing where maybe you'd want to practice our prana mudra today where you have again the thumb, the ring finger, and the pinky together, and the pointer finger and uh, middle finger are extended. Where you can keep, we're gonna start, I'm gonna use my right hand, okay? So you could take that uh, left hand over to your knee or if legs are extended, just outward facing up. And we're gonna start with closing the right nostril. If you don't wanna practice this mudra, just keep your palms open and maybe just use your middle finger. It really just depends on what you want to do because this is your practice. All right, so let's take a deep breath in through the left nostril. 
And let's hold the left nostril once we get to the end of our inhalation and exhale on the right. Option to close your eyes or stare at a point of focus. Take a deep breath in through the right nostril. And hold the right nostril, exhale on the left. Inhale through the left once you're at the end of your exhalation. Deep breath in so your belly is expanding, shoulders back, spine is long. Pay attention to your posture. Hold the left nostril, exhale on the right. Take a deep breath in through the right nostril. Inhale should match your exhales for the true benefit of this breathing technique. Hold the right nostril, exhale on the left. Deep breath in through the left. Hold the left nostril, exhale on the right. Inhale through the right. And exhale through the left. We're going to do that five more times. But you're going to go at your own pace, okay? So one cycle is taking a deep breath in through the, through the left. Hold the left nostril, exhale on the right. That's one cycle, so you have four more times to go. Okay, very good. Take a deep breath in. Hmm. And a deep breath out through the mouth. Exhaling, seeing if you can bring your shoulders closer to the earth. And take five breaths at your own pace, closing your eyes or focusing on a point of interest. Whether that be your intention or an object. And release your prana mudra. And let's just rotate our wrists, maybe shake them out a bit. Just to create a chi, create some energy, some life force, getting that flow moving. And moving into shavasana, final resting pose, corpse pose. Today I'm going to use my blanket. Uh, I will not be in the full Shavasana like you because I will be reading you 
a, um, a paragraph from one of my favorite books, Mudras, Yoga in Your Hands. And this will help with um, your, uh, the root chakra, okay? So I'm using a bolster that's going right against my lower back to fold back and open my heart. Arms are resting there, draped over to the sides. And here's where you can use your blanket, whatever feels right for you. Starting at the crown of your head, closing your eyes, just settling in, maybe rotating your ankles, adjusting your hip bones, your legs, giving yourself a body scan. Your eyelids are heavy, your lips are slightly parted, and your tongue is floating to the back of your mouth. Shoulders are a little bit more open. Arms are heavy, your right arm is heavy. Your palm is open, your fingertips reach open as well. Right arm is heavy. Left arm, a little bit heavy, getting heavier as you bring the back of your hand closer to the ground, fingertips open. Allow your chest, your shoulders, your arms to be heavy. Your root chakra, your lower back, your glutes, resting into the ground. Right leg is open and heavy. Toes are loose and your foot is open. Left leg is heavy. Toes are loose, your foot is open. Before we fully transition into Shavasana, I'd like you to imagine yourself as a tree. And if this is difficult for you, then create the mental image of a tree in front of you. While you're inhaling, see how the energy flows into the roots and how these roots become thicker and longer. And while exhaling, let the strength flow into the trunk. From there it travels into the crown, far beyond the tree into the sky and towards the sun. The larger the rootstock becomes, the greater the size of the crown. The same also applies to us, to our existence, how we act, and what we have. Begin to wiggle your toes and your fingertips. And the ankles, your calves, your shins, your thighs, your torso, your lower back and glutes, all subtly moving, your arms and your wrists. Maybe you wanna move your head from side to side. 
Coming up into a seated position very slowly. And hands into prayer position or the prana mudra. Taking this light, this groundedness and this love into the rest of your day. Thank you for showing up for yourself and thank you for giving me the opportunity to teach to you. Namaste. If you have any questions, feel free to message me. Remember to hydrate, drink water. And I will see you at the same time in the same place next week. Again, Jennifer Worrell, Yin Yoga teacher with Yoga for Caregivers. Thank you.